Howdy y'all. Got my cat here with me. Um, I've been uploading some Appalachian folklore videos and have gotten some questions. I was trying to do shorts and I thought you, they could only be a minute long. So I'm going to have to figure that out because maybe they can be longer. Um, but I just wanted to come in and address a few things, explain it a little better, um, answer some questions I've seen in the comments. I'm trying to answer them, but I'm definitely behind on answering comments. So basically, uh, the one video went in the Appalachian Mountains. It's, no, you didn't. That's what we're taught. So, I am from Western North Carolina. I was adopted and raised by my great-grandparents. Still called them my mom and papa. Um, papa was born in 1912, the year the Titanic sank. Mama was born in 1924. And they were from way out in the mountains. Just way out there. And things are just different in the Appalachian Mountains. The way of life, I guess, manners, just our culture. We have a unique culture there. And the interesting thing is, is all over the Appalachian Mountains, depending on what state you're in or, you know, I guess where you grew up, different areas are different than other areas, if that makes sense. So like the culture as a whole, there's an Appalachian culture, um, especially in the South, because there are some places in the North where the Appalachian Mountains run through. But in my particular area, it's in Western North Carolina, um, I'm coming to find it's definitely a little unique. And, you know, all places could have their own uniqueness. In my area, when immigrants came over, the whole area was occupied by Native Americans, some different tribes, but mainly Cherokee. And, you know, there is a Cherokee reservation in Western North Carolina now, unfortunately, um, that, you know, all that stuff happened. But there's still a lot of Cherokee that just live out in the area, not on the reservation. And when immigrants first started coming over, the Cherokee had called those mountains home for like 16,000 years before anyone came over. And we all know there were skirmishes and stuff like that, but the Cherokee people in my area welcomed people in and taught us mountain medicine. They taught us information about the mountains, at least in that area. And this would pertain to the folklore of the Appalachian Mountains. And of course, people coming over had their own beliefs and um, I, maybe you would say folklore um, from the countries that they had came from. And it's largely Scotch Irish in my area. Scots-Irish, excuse me, and it all kind of mixed. There's also um, some folklore um, that was taught to people in the area um, by African Americans, and everything just kind of mixed together, but ma majorly, it was what the Cherokee taught us from them living in the mountains for literally thousands and thousands of years. <clears throat> so... Throughout the generations, these, what we call lessons, were passed down from the elders to their descendants. A lot of people won't talk about it at all, or just maybe make reference to it if, if they're asked or if they have to. Um, and there is a lot of superstition in the area. Especially, I guess, with the older folks, from my experience. But I was blessed to be raised by older folks, much older folks. So sometimes I feel like I learned some lessons and ways of life that my mom and papa had grown up learning and living. Um, and so that 
was passed down to me and I don't have children. So I want to pass down all of my mom and papa's wisdom to anyone that I can. Um, even if it's just a couple people who see it on YouTube. So papa didn't really talk about it too much. But mama did teach us. My whole family was taught this. I feel like pretty much everyone in my area was taught this. And whether you believe it or whether you've had experiences, that's up to you. However, I can't really think of anyone that I grew up with or that was friends with that never had any weird experiences. But with making these videos, I have discovered some people say that they're from Appalachia and that their family was from Appalachia and that they never learned any of these lessons and that they never had any weird experiences. Well, I lived there and like I said, it was a very rural area that I lived in and I did learn the lessons and I have had very weird experiences. I have not experienced everything that we were taught about. Um, however, I have experienced many weird things. So some of the folklore, um, when you hear everybody say, no, you didn't. Basically what they're saying is, and it's not always if you're just like out, like say hiking or camping, like straight up in the woods, like it's kind of in the area, but it is mainly like out in the woods, but we apply these lessons, period, to our life there. And no one is afraid to live there. It's just a part of what you're taught living there. And when you experience weird things, you follow the lessons that you're taught and generally have no problems. So the no you didn't thing came comes out, I guess, when, say you're out in the mountains, hiking, camping, whatever, and you're by yourself, not necessarily just you by yourself, but because that can be dangerous just because like, what if you get hurt and there's no one there and maybe you don't have cell phone signal because it's kind of spotty in the area though. It's, it's getting better. Um, like what if you fall and get hurt when you're by yourself and what if you can't call anyone because you don't have signal. So now you're hurt and you're by yourself and you don't have signal to call for help or, you know, there's all kinds of critters out in the woods. Like, what if, I mean, generally, generally animals will leave you alone if they don't perceive you as a threat. Like, if you don't, like a black bear. Some people are totally, like, totally scared. Um, I'm in Boston at the moment. So, like, up here there was a bear that got in some people's trash. And they lived, like, right on the line between two different towns. It didn't damage anything except just knocking over the trash can and digging through the trash. So it was a nuisance, I guess, because, you know, they had to go pick up the trash and put it back in the, the trash can. But like a week or two later, it was spotted again in the next town over, which was like, like I said, right on the line, did the same thing. And they actually, I guess it had identifying features. So they knew it was the same bear. They actually caught it. And instead of, you know, putting it out, you know, somewhere in nature here, rehoming it, they euthanized it. Everyone was so scared of the bear and it didn't threaten or hurt anyone or any pets. It just got into trash twice. So that was kind of sad. But I mean, back home, we had bears in our yard going through our trash and all we did was yell at them and they left. And one of the bears <clears throat> that we had a lot of trouble with, I mean, she even had her babies with her. And, I mean, they weren't, like, newborn babies, but they were babies. And they still didn't come after us. But you should always be careful with any animal that has its baby. You should be careful with any animal. And, you know, there's different things to do with different animals. But, like, with a bear, you just yell at it. You raise your arms, make yourself look big, holler at it, and generally they're just going to leave. Different bears are different, but, you know, the black bears that we have, that's just generally how it is. So if you're out in the woods and it's not nature, like normal nature, there are some lessons. So if you hear 
your name being called? No, you didn't. You don't acknowledge that you heard your name. You do not answer back. If it is, I'll say, an entity, that is one of the things we learn about in folklore, they say that by answering your name back, it's inviting them in. And I guess that's kind of best explained by you know that you heard your name. You answered back. Well, now they know that you know that they're there. So that's kind of inviting them in. It's the same thing with whistling. If you hear something whistling at you and it's not an animal, you don't whistle back because, again, it's inviting them in. I've heard people saying, don't look at the trees. Now, that one... I wasn't really told to never look at the trees. I think, in general, it's if you see something and maybe you look out and you see glowing eyes. It could totally be a regular critter, but it could be other stuff too. You just don't acknowledge that you saw it and you just calmly leave the area. If any of this happens, you just calmly leave the area and you know, some people have experiences that are like super scary. You don't acknowledge that it happened. That's why you say, no, you didn't. You didn't hear it. You didn't see it. And you don't talk about it. So if it happens, and say you're hiking, and you hear somebody whisper your name, and you know it's nobody that's with you, or if you are by yourself, you know that it's no one because, you know, you're by yourself. There's no one there. I mean, that could really apply anywhere. You just keep on hiking. You just leave the area calmly. And while you may be freaking out on the inside, you have to compose yourself and not, I guess you just can't freak out. You get out of the area. I mentioned to someone, you get back to your car, then you can freak out all you want. But while you're there, you just act like nothing's happening. Anytime I've had weird experiences, I leave calmly while in my mind I am praying the entire time that when I get back to my car or whatever, that's when I freak out. Um, some of the things that they're talking about are haints, which are not good spirits, um, like demons. Just spirits in general, generally not friendly spirits. Um, haints also are something that you'll see old timers um, when you go in they'll shut their door at night they'll pull their curtains and that's to keep things from looking in um, you'll see people put a bowl of rice on their porch in front of their door or a broomstick with a broom that has lots of uh, the pieces of straw whatever you call it and folklore says that a haint is almost a compulsion that they have to count stuff. So that'll stop them so that they count every single grain of rice. They'll count every little piece of straw on the broom. And then also, this is probably more common in the older folks. Maybe even the older folks have passed, but still some people do it. They'll put newspapers up on their walls, particularly near their bedrooms but not in the bedroom, because the idea is if a haint does get in, which is, you know, an evil spirit, they're, they have that compulsion, and they'll have to read every word on the newspaper. And, you know, they say in folklore that haints can get in through any, like, opening in your house, so like a chimney or even a keyhole in your door, like if there's a keyhole that you can, like, look through and you know, go all the way out outside, they can get in that keyhole. Some people, depending on the area, they will paint their front porch, or both, I guess, if they got two, um, a color called haint blue. You can Google that, um, and that's supposed to keep them away. Other things, like out in the mountains, 
you'll hear about not a deer which are I've made videos separately on a lot of these topics um, not a deer are what you would think are deer but when you look at them like their eyes are more in the shape of like a predator they're not exactly in the right spot like they're more in the front like a predator as opposed to the side like a non-predator um, a lot of times the joints in their knees will be I guess almost backwards um, they'll stand up they're just really creepy and um, I have never that I know of experienced a knotted deer but that's something you'll hear about. There are tons of people who've reached out to me and told me stories about when they did. Or like people hit them with their car and they'll get out and there's nothing there. Um, and they think, oh, I heard a deer. And they'll kind of look to, around to see if they saw it or heard it to get it help. But there's nothing there. Um, you know... Depending on where you are, people are still scared of witches and particularly witches who, um, I guess, are negative and do, I guess, what you'd call like bad magic or bad spells. Um, and I, I guess the folklore or the lessons say, you know, they'll go out in the woods and do that. Then, of course, you could always stumble upon somebody having a still out there, and they're, they're really not going to like that, but um, that's not what the folklore talks about. That's just something different. Um, and then there's uh, what people, I guess, most identify with as skinwalkers. Um, they can take the shape of other animals, just multiple shapes. Um, they're just generally not good and you hear about that in multiple cultures multiple cultures around the world and within the United States um, and so like I said a lot of this has been taught from the Cherokee Native Americans who lived in our area lived in the woods for thousands and thousands of years and we don't let it stop us we're not afraid I was out in the woods all the time as a kid it's just if something weird happens you just follow the lesson you just leave the area and you stay home and then you're probably gonna be good um, I have had very weird experiences I uploaded a video with my scariest paranormal experience we're just very generalized we were um, camping in a new area that we hadn't been in before and it was getting dark and we walked way out into the mountains like miles and miles carrying all of our stuff to camp for I don't remember now two or three nights and we get there it was after dark well it was almost completely dark but I went ahead and set up um, some lamps that we had I hung them from some trees in the area I stayed behind to clear the weeds and stuff from the area to make a campsite while the other three in the party went back to the car to drag the huge cooler of food and just all kinds of crap that we bought, brought. But it was a really, really long walk to get back to the car and then get the stuff and then basically drag that cooler and stuff back. So they were gone um, for hours and I was there by myself and everything got really eerie and really quiet. And that'll happen a lot of times right before something weird happens or you'll feel, feel the hair stand up on the back of your neck and essentially all that happened it got really quiet just very eerie I got this weird feeling and then I just started hearing voices that you know they were not in my head they were outside of my head and it was just like it was men and women and children and just all these just tons of random voices saying stuff and it was all happening at once so you couldn't pick out really any particular word they were saying because it was like they were all talking over each other and I could, you could just hear it in all directions like it was swirling around you well it was dark I didn't have a GPS I'd never been to this area before I couldn't I couldn't do anything because if I wandered off I was going to be lost in these mountains and so just all I could do was just get out of like get out of where I 
immediately was out. I was still in the same area, but I just went and hunkered down and prayed. And this went on for quite some time. And pretty much, pretty much right before the, the rest of the party got back is when it stopped. That was really scary because I could not leave. And it wasn't me imagining things. It wasn't in my head. I was not intoxicated with alcohol or any type of drug. I don't do those things. Um, that's just one of many experiences I've had. But stuff doesn't happen 24-7. I know some people go out looking for it. And tons of paranormal investigators come to my area just for that reason to investigate these things. Um, there's a lot of tourists that come to my area because they want to experience something. Like I said, it's more of a lifetime of living there and over your lifetime, if you experience these things, then you have a few stories. But like I said, some people say that they've never heard them and they've never experienced anything. And then I've had some people come and say, well, you know, I never believed any of this stuff until I was like in my 60s and had my first weird experience. One person said they were in their 70s before they had their first experience. So it's just kind of like, if you know, you know. And I don't know if it's more prevalent in my area, um, because of kind of the history of my area. Or I've also wondered if some people are just more sensitive to paranormal activity. But if y'all have any questions, I know this has ended up being a long video. Um, I'm just kind of, I'm half asleep still. It's 6.07 a.m. right now, and I've been up since like 3.30. We, we get up ridiculously early. If y'all have any questions, or if you want me to make a video explaining something further in detail, just let me know. And that really scary experience I had in the mountains, um, when my, the rest of my party got back, and, you know, we set up the tents and everything, I didn't mention a word of it to any of them the entire time that we were there. After we got home, like two or three days later, then I told my husband what happened. And he's just like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so you don't talk about it. And um, it was my fault for letting us get separated. It, you're not supposed to do that. And it was a bad idea. And yeah. And so anyway, like I said, if y'all have any questions, just let me know. Um, I can always do another video or leave a reply to your comment. Um, or whatnot, and I appreciate you for watching. Please subscribe if you have not already. I'm going to keep including um, some more folklore videos that I want to share. I'm a very random person, so I've got all kinds of stuff on my channel, um, and I'm not going to be um, just stuck to one topic. I've got a lot of stuff I talk about, and I advocate for mental health as well. So I hope y'all have a great day. And I will talk to you later.